So you'll always get one, I mean, to not to use the values, but you'll get like the least, uh, not not the suckers ending that we, we talked about, but not really just an equilibrium that is an optimal. Right. Whereas if you both cooperate, you get an optimal outcome. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that seems like the rational move because cooperating leads to a better overall score when you just keep cooperating with the other person. Yeah. Now, do you think it's easier to cooperate? I mean, this is an obvious question. It's rhetorical. Do you think it's easy easier to cooperate if you have open channels of communication? Yeah. I mean, it would be, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, the dilemma part is that you have a closed channel of communication. So, um, but I'll, let's, I'll bring that point back again, but I want to hear some other thoughts. About how, to what extent a computer can actually be autonomous. Um, I remember one one of the settings on uh, the predefined settings was um, well, there were two that I found interesting: gradual and adaptive. Mm -hmm. And I liked gradual because you tried a few times to defect, and you tried also to uh, cooperate, and you saw what the other player did. And mm -hmm. after that, you saw what you know what uh, what did the best. And I found that actually, in the end, I saw a lot of the white images, the, the doves, <laughs> yeah. meaning that they, both of them cooperated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Yeah. So in other words, we're trying to, let's put yourself in the shoes of a programmer. You're trying to program a computer to, to outsmart a human. Is there anything that you could do? The filming you'd want. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. I mean, there there could be applications for it. Look, think of uh, a chess a chess computer, right? It was a big blue. Mm -hmm. um, I think some of the first chess algorithms used something like the prisoner's dilemma. Um, so the thing about the prisoner's dilemma is you you gotta get this. Um, <laughs> you'd have a two by two matrix, right, with a certain payoff. So. And here are your decisions. Maybe upside down here. I'll just put. I'll just show a little human here. And here are the uh, computer's decisions, right? That's fair <laughs> <laughs> um, This is a very simple concept, right? Now, let's say a computer is playing a human in chess. What's different about chess versus the prisoner's dilemma? It's enormous. Well, there's a lot more meat. Yeah. Yeah. Many more variables. Your choice set is, is enormous, right? You can, just even from the beginning, you can make how many moves? Eight plus, plus two, right? So ten moves just more. just in the beginning. And then it just opens up from there. And um, even within those eight moves, it's like, it's like the variation. Oh, yeah. It's like, you can move one or two, yeah. or, and, the, and the, uh, the knight's each way. So yeah. it's actually 20. 20 moves. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a good point, yeah. So what, what happens is matrix. Game. Chess is a zero sum game. What about prisoners' dilemma? Um, I'm I'm pretty sure it's not because the it's about reducing for both of you at the same time possibly. Yeah, and the payoff structure is like normally nonlinear. Yeah. So um, if you both cooperate and both defect, the scores are different. Um, at least normally, you can set it up so that it's zero sum, but normally it's not. So what would happen uh, to this matrix now if, if we were programming a computer to play chess? Very big. It would. So it could get extended, right, by a lot. And what could you what could you inform the computer about in order to improve its chances of beating a human? What would it what would it want to know? Previous like, moves. Yeah. Or just different yeah, possible sure. scenarios. But what about the different possible scenarios? Like, let's say this is this is one chess move, right? Like, I go, you go. Yeah. What happens after this? There's another matrix on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. For the next move. And then there's another matrix on top of that. It's a bigger and bigger matrix. Mm -hmm. Now, what would it, let's say we end up here. I choose this move, computer chooses this move. That corresponds to a whole new matrix, right? Each one of these corresponds to a whole new matrix. Okay. What would you want to know about each one of these, <laughs> each one of these uh, cells in the matrix? Oh, sorry, what would you want to know? About, about each of these the, cells. The probability there you go. that uh, it's going to happen. Exactly. The probability that and now, the computer is going to try to learn the probability that you'll make certain choices. The, the most advanced chess algorithms kind of try to understand what type of player you are. 
the, the ones at the beginning, I think they kind of just use a database of what's a typical human choice, mm -hmm. and it doesn't adapt to your stuff. The, the more advanced algorithms actually adapt, and it's a lot more complex than this. But just I'm just trying to give you some ideas of how this could work. Um, now let's discuss uh, just this simplified version where the computer just takes a probability based on a database of general human players. What would you? How would you categorize that in terms of artificial intelligence? If your choices are intelligent or not intelligent. <laughs> not that intelligent. <laughs> right, not intelligent, right? I mean, it can compute quickly. It can compute all these probabilities quickly, but it's just simple. It's, it's computational. Just, it's just yeah. straight computation, you're multiplying a few probabilities together. It's not, it's not adaptive, right? Um, at what point would you say the computer becomes intelligent? Well, we're intelligent, and do we have these matrices inside our heads when we're playing chess? You don't? I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't I'm not aware of them. Well, um, it's, it's sort of a, a simulated way of how you might think, right? I guess. Because you're trying to think, what's the chance that you'll make this move, and what would be my choices in that case? I feel like uh, what the computer is doing is just like a big building, mm -hmm. and you can take a different pathway up the building. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's intelligence. And I understand that like, even if it changes, if the building changes um, with the person who's playing it every time you go through it, um, I don't see that as intelligent. I see that as um, a direction that you're giving it. So what is the human doing? Are they designing a new building and building it? or I don't, I don't know. I just like wanted they, to compare it with an analogy. I feel like when I'm playing chess, I'm experiencing it for the first time in that I'm not, I mean, you're supposed to think ahead in chess, but the fact is, with every move, um, everything's in the overall. But I just don't see it as a matrix inside my head. And if the computer is a bunch of matrices, I don't see that as intelligence. Well, can everything go wrong with a given move? I mean, I think each given move corresponds to a finite series. Yeah, it has to be a matrix only because yeah. the the possibilities are not infinite. It's, finite, it's different yeah. from an to a purely organic system that can... Exactly. Tim, how, what's your matrix for picking a college? Um, well, I have nine. <laughs> and, um, uh, like the programs it has, uh, financial aid, um, location, I guess. So, I mean, some decisions, even, yeah. if, even if it's not overt, some decisions we are, you, you know, using cost-benefit analysis yeah, for and, sure. and creating our own uh, matrices. So, like, um, and I guess the, the opponent there might be the admissions board, so you want to wait, you, know, you might not want to spend 50 or $100 on an application to feed you a school you have no chance of getting into. I mean, like, I, I didn't apply to Harvard, I probably wouldn't have gotten in, you guys probably would, but I didn't have a, a good pitch shot, I don't think. So I didn't want to spend the $50 on the application to go back. Um, you are going to say? Yeah, I, in my opinion, I think the computer would be intelligent when it has the ability, or, well, to make an informed decision. Um, like you said, when it can adapt to a specific situation based on what the what the other well what the opponent did before that, and adapt to that, um, and yeah, make an informed decision decision based upon that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't really agree with that because then then we assume that this computer playing, uh, well, chess playing computer is intelligent, and I I don't think it's intelligent. I think. I think to be intelligent, we need to, the computer needs to be able to have a schema and then apply what it knows.